I'm Kalita Stokes, General Manager and Executive Director of Dominion Television. I'm here today with one of the most powerful women that I've met in years. <laughs> My very good friend and mentee, uh, Sheila Walcott. Sheila joins us here at the Artist Exchange all the way from Los Angeles, California. Um, I spoke a bit about where she comes from. We both are from Washington, D.C., born and raised, schooled there. And um, she happened to work her way up to Hollywood. And so I thought it would be good to her, for her to come and have a talk with all of us about what she, how she got there, what she's doing, and what it takes to actually get there. So Sheila, thank you for coming to talk to me. Thank you for having me. I mean, it was like a chance encounter where we met, mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we were walking past mm -hmm. each other at mm -hmm. the Image Award, mm -hmm. and it was like, wait a minute, I know you. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's exactly what happened. And we ended up standing, you know, around each other mm -hmm. that whole night, and mm -hmm. then we had lunch the next yep. day. It was great. So this is definitely something that was destined to Full happen. circle. Yeah, full circle for both of us. Mm -hmm. So let's talk. Yes, yes ma'am. Let's start with you. Now, okay. after we were acquainted early on in, in your, your your life, when you were like 15, 16. Mm -hmm, 15, mm -hmm. After that, of course, you went to college. I don't know where I went, I, I don't know. <laughs> but I was doing, a, I, I did a lot as well. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that. Okay. What, after high school, what happened for you? How did you transition to become the director of development for Warner Brothers? Well, um, first and foremost, there was this amazing program. We talked about a little bit about Mayor Bears Youth Leadership Institute, um, but there was another program that I was in um, in high school called the Young Playwrights Theater. And they had a contest where you wrote a one act play and you would enter the contest and whoever won, their play was put on and it went on tour around the city. And my AP English teacher entered my one act play into this contest okay. and it won okay. and it went on tour around the city. And the director of that play brought me in to give context to the actors for their characters and kind of talk about you know, what the genesis of play was. And I, rem I wanted to be a lawyer at that point. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember her, I remember thinking, and then I said it out loud, thought out loud, and I said, do you guys get paid to do this? And they were like, yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you can get paid to like write stuff? Like, <laughs> what? Like, how do I not know this? And um, from that moment on, I said, okay, how do I get into this business? How do I um, be a part of a, 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 an industry where you can tell stories for a living? And um, the director of that play said to me, you know, listen, theater is for people who love it. You know, you're never gonna make $20 million a play, you know? She said, people who are in theater love it, they eat it, they breathe it, there's nothing else that they can do. But if you wanna be in this business and tell stories and make money, you should go to LA and work in the movie business. And I was like, film school it is. So <laughs> that's what I did. Um, so from I went to Temple University in Philadelphia for film school. Um, I studied abroad in, um, in Rome. Um, so just learn film theory and film history, um, you know, the Italian neorealist movement, the French New Wave. And then from there, I did an LA internship um, and that LA internship was a great experience for me because I actually got to live in Los Angeles and actually work in the business. Mm -hmm. And that was a really eye-opening opening experience because when you're in film school, you're, you're learning theory and you're working on your own projects 
But what you learn once you get to Hollywood is what you're learning in film school is not necessarily applicable when you first start out. And so that internship really, really helped me in that regard to think, what do I actually want to do? Do I actually want to be a writer? Do I actually want to be a director? And what it also opened my eyes to was that it was that there are so many jobs that, and not just jobs, careers that you can have in the entertainment business that are not just writer director. You know, I didn't know what a studio executive was when I was in film school. And, you know, throughout that internship and then my first job, I really kind of understood the landscape. And I thought the studio executives are like the people who, um, decide what gets Call made and what I'm like that seems like a really cool job uh, <laughs> I might want to get into I might want to get into this side of the business and be the person identifying talent yeah. and championing them so that they can you know make studio movies and so um, there was a lot of stuff that happened in the middle, but then I ended up. <laughs> I ended up there. Well, I have to talk yeah, about yeah. <laughs> a lot of stuff happened in the middle, but I think it was it was understanding that LA internship, as I said, was really important to understand the landscape and to understand where I thought I might fit in best in that in that environment. And then it was just about learning the players, learning who. Um, the producers were learning who the executives were, learning who the agents and managers were. And from there kind of saying, I think the studio side is is where um, I might be able to, to really have a valuable input. Yeah. Wow. It's interesting because you mentioned the playwright program that you were in. They said mm -hmm. theater isn't it, but yeah. <laughs> you make some money you yes. can go to film and TV. Yes. But I, I found it interesting that you said, okay, I'm going to study this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just being on the other side of the camera most times from mm -hmm. a business perspective, how important is schooling and theory and you know, getting that proper training. Yeah. It, because there are some greats out here That's right. that haven't gone and gotten formal training. That's Am right. I right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there are several people that we know that are doing great things in the industry, but they, they'll tell you, I didn't go to school. Mm -hmm. It's just a gift. Mm -hmm. So how important is that? Well, I, again, I think it, it really depends on your constitution, right? Like okay. there's, there's no one way mm -hmm. to be successful in this business. A lot of people that I meet that are in the industry, even if they went to college, they didn't study film in college, right? Mm -hmm. Like they went to business school or they went to, or they had a whole other careers and then decided this was something they were passionate about. Um, so I think it really depends on you and, and what your constitution is. I did not know that this was a job. So for me, I really wanted to understand the business and that just felt like film school seemed like the way to do it. But you absolute, I don't know that that's an absolute that you need to do it. Um, but what I will say, it was helpful for me to go to school because I love movies and I love TV and I love storytelling and to understand the history of it, to understand that the impact that we have on pop culture mm -hmm. um, to be in this business was really um, important to me. But in addition to that, what it really got me was that LA internship mm -hmm. because at the time that I was coming up in film school, you couldn't get, it was hard to get a job in general just to break through the business. I didn't know anyone in entertainment. I didn't have, you know, um, any, any connections to the industry. And so that LA internship was really my foot in the door. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't have gotten that without college credit. Okay. And so being in film school was helpful for that. In addition to that, there are a lot of people who went to Temple. Um, James Lasseter, for example, who um, is Will Smith's uh, producing partner, he went to Temple. Um, you know, there's several um, great executives and producers and actors and directors who went to Temple. And so having that network is also um, helpful. Again, it's, they didn't necessarily go to film school, so a, a lot of them did, but um, it's really nice to come up, I think, with a group and have them kind of be your class, so to speak, when you're, when you're in entertainment. And so that was helpful. But again, it's not necessary, um, but I do think it has its, it has its pros and cons. I think that's good to note that it's not necessary mm -hmm. because as we're talking about the media landscape changing here in Africa, mm -hmm. it may be far and few uh, 
uh, between film schools sure. available sure. for creatives to go to. Sure. Um, and one of the things that I've learned is that people just get it done. They yeah. do it. And it's good. Yeah. You've seen content here from here, right? Yeah, I have. Um, I think African City okay. is one yeah, um, that's, that... That's a great one. Yeah, that me and my girlfriend will talk about. That's one of about. the most mainstream that I know. Yeah, no, yeah. it's 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 awesome. Mm-hmm. And then... Um, what else? Um, the Burial of Kojo yeah, is another yeah, one okay, that I saw. Yeah, that's a great one Beautiful too. cinematography in that mm-hmm. movie, Interaction. Um, but, but listen, I think at the end of the day, the barrier to entry to be in this business is very low. Mm-hmm. If you have a phone, you can be in this business. Right. <laughs> if you have a camera, you can be in this business. You know what I mean? I and so it really comes down to, do, to your point, doing it, right? Um, for, as an executive, what I'm always lo- I'm always looking for new talent. I'm always looking for new um, shows and, and movies to build my my references, um, but also to identify talent. And so I I won't be able to find those um, new voices if they're not making things. That's right. And if I can't find it. Mm-hmm. And so it's really, I think, important to have a body of work mm-hmm. and to be able to say, here's my, you know, here's my website, here's my YouTube channel, here's my Vimeo or whatever it is because the proof is in the pudding That's at the right. end of the day. So I want to get into um, what you mentioned earlier about having your work on YouTube. Where's your YouTube page? Where maybe your Instagram sure. page is. How important is that to be prepared and to have your content ready for that chance moment for meeting an executive at your level? It's extremely important. Um, it's extremely important because um, no matter how great your pitch for yourself is, no matter how passionate you feel about the idea that you have, um, without having proof of concept, without having proof of your work and the quality of it, there's not really any way for me to sell you up upwards to my bosses who make the decisions about who's getting hired and who's not. So it's really important to have a body of work. It's really important to be able to say, here is my link to blah, 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 or, you know, here's my YouTube, here's my Instagram, here's my Facebook, here's my whatever the, Um, or Vimeo or um, wherever your work is, your YouTube channel, it's very important to keep those things up to date. If you have a website, you know, point people in that direction. Um, And I would also say it's really important to distinguish yourself. So what I mean by that is, um, you know, this is such a, a, uh, th- as I said, the barrier to entry to get into this business is very low. So anyone with a camera mm-hmm. can call themselves a director, right? What distinguishes, you know, the levels of direction is the, the vision, right? And so it's really important for you to be able to say, this is my voice. This is how I see um, storytelling. This is how I'm bringing something different to the table than the next director. And so I would also say, within your body of work to just be very distinctive so it doesn't seem like a generic piece of work that anyone can do. I think you have to own what your vision is and what your voice is so that you can say, this is why you should hire me for this job. This is why it's important for you to have me be a part of this story because this is how I'm gonna distinguish it um, and how I'm gonna craft it and shape it to be something different than you've seen before. I've heard some time before that the numbers, let's, let's, and I'm speaking in terms of marketing and mm-hmm. social media, that the numbers do matter. Sure. Um, but in, in just in understanding those who are just breaking in, mm-hmm. have great content or mm-hmm. a body of work, yep. but they don't have that number, the numbers. They mm-hmm. don't have the following. They don't have the girth of what other people are like. Oh, they got, Three million followers, we want mm-hmm. those type of things. How how do you leverage that though? Because I know a lot of people, even the people that I've come across here in, in, in Africa, they have great content, but the numbers don't kind of match it. And and I'm I'm speaking from an executive perspective. Oh, well, who's following them? Who knows? Them? Sure. So how important are the numbers on social media and marketing for for getting your content seen at a higher level? I mean, I will, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, it's important because, you know, 
let's just put aside me finding new talent on a YouTube channel. Generally, I'm finding new talent because agents and managers are are pitching me those people. And so in order for something that is not, that is coming outside of the studio system to be um, put on my radar, it has to be a viral sensation. Yeah. It has to be, oh my gosh, have you seen this thing? You know, it has to be a water cooler moment. And so, you know, I, I think agents and managers are really important in that regard. I think if you're not getting those numbers, you need someone to help help sell you. Um, I don't know what the agency representation landscape is like here, but you know, um, there, are, there are definitely film festivals and fellowships and programs that you can apply to. And those are ways to do two things. One, get yourself that Hollywood validation. Mm -hmm. My film was at Sundance. My film was at South by Southwest. Um, and you know, they have shorts programs. They have TV programs. Um, Sundance has fellowship labs. That's a really good way to get that validation. And we are looking for those people. Oh, who who was this, who won the awards at Sundance this year? Who won Tri Tri Tribeca or Toronto? We're absolutely looking at those people. Um, and we're also there, we're at those film festivals. And so I think that's a really, um, it's really important to get, especially if you don't have a connection into the business, the validation from um, some Hollywood outlet because I mean, again, it's from a cultural perspective in the Hollywood landscape, it really is about your network is your is your life's blood, mm -hmm. it's, it's currency. And so when you have people that say, you have to watch this thing, if I trust the person that said that to me and I, I've done business with them, I'm gonna watch the thing immediately. Mm -hmm. If I don't know you and you've given me something to watch, and then someone I know has given me something to watch. I'm gonna watch the person I know first. Mm -hmm. And so I would look at those film, those film um, festivals and fellowships like the person we know, because that's true. Yeah. Um, and so that's why that is really important to, I would think about that. And then the other thing I would think about is um, linking up with people who do have the following. If, if, if you are a director and there's a writer that has a following or vice versa or a cinematographer, et cetera, I think, again, I spoke about having a class of people. I think the same thing is cr true of creatives. I mean, if you think about some of the most um, successful people in Hollywood, Adam Sandler, um, you know, Judd Apatow, these guys have a group of people that they all came in the business together and they've kind of grown up together. And Kevin so Hart Kevin Hart, yeah. you know, Will Smith, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, these are people that kind of identified who was good at what and they all kind of helped each other. I think um, Quint uh, Quentin Tarantino and Rob, Rob, you know, Robert um, Rodriguez, yeah. they had a great partnership mm -hmm. and have a great partnership. So I think it's about also linking up with those mm -hmm. people and saying, okay, I don't have the following, but this is what I can bring to the table for you mm -hmm. and perhaps grow that partnership into yeah. something where everyone wins. Yeah, and that's good for you to mention that because I found here in Africa, community is very important. There mm -hmm. are a lot of different groups and networks that come together. It's just mobilizing those networks. Yep in the right direction That's right. so that they're able to produce and create mm -hmm. things that can be seen and heard um, at a high, in, in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to touch back on something that you mentioned um, relating to um, the fellowships and sure. the, the, the agents. I want to find out from you if that isn't something that's prominent because that's not something that's prominent. Agents and managers, mm. and they, I mean, they have them. Mm -hmm. But if you're just out here on a limb, um, so to speak, mm. what can you do to kind of get an agent that may not be here in Africa? Mm -hmm. what, 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 would, what would your approach be to doing that? I mean, it's the same thing that you would do to get my attention, right? It's, the difference is it's an agent's job and it's a manager's job to find new talent. Okay. So they are going to be, it's my job to do that as well, but I have other things in my job, mm -hmm. but they make their money <laughs> based on who they represent and who the new voices are. And so um, they are absolutely looking at fellowships, 
you know, festivals. You know, if you're a writer, you, there's several screenplay competitions. If you're a director, there's several fellowships that you can enter as well. Um, and they're absolutely looking for those, those, um, for those voices, but they also, as am I, at the festivals, right? Like, so yeah. what they're going to those festivals to do is look for unsigned talent. So they are going to Sundance and going, and they will say, here's a list of people who have movies I've heard of that are really good that don't have representation yet. So they are, they're looking for you. This is the, this is, but, but you have to get to the friend that they know, right? Like you have to get to that, that, that person that says, oh, you have to watch this thing because it was at the, so that, that's a barrier to entry. But I think once you, if you can find that kind of connection, um, it's key because that's, we're all looking for those things. Right. So the key is, it's not even about the continent. It's just getting mm -hmm. in the right place. That's right. Getting in the festivals, making mm -hmm. sure that you have presentation mm -hmm. online, whether it be Instagram, Vimeo, yep. uh, VHX, you name mm -hmm. it. Just making sure that you're not localizing everything that's so right. that you can be sent. That's Y'all right. heard that, right? Hi, everybody. It's Kay Stokes, General Manager and Executive Director of Dominion Television. Listen, thank you so much for watching our YouTube channel. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and tell all your friends about the quality Christian lifestyle content that Dominion TV has to share. Yebe Sheabio. See you again soon, and may God richly bless you. Keep watching.